Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mac here from Max HD Tutorials with the Instagram clone series. I believe now we're in part six. And we just finished the login. The login works. And when you try to log in, it actually um, echoes out. So if we go to our login view controller, it echoes out the user ID. So the next part of this is actually going to be the sign up. And I always split them into two, two, two videos. So the API part just to uh, not get them separated. And uh, I mean, to get them separated, the API part and then the app. So let's just get started. So if we go to our Sublime text editor, make sure you have your uh, Laravel um, server open and also your map for your database. Just making sure. And let's go here. So this control is actually called login API, but I'm actually going to use this controller as well for the uh, sign up. So here is where we created an account, as you can tell. So before we actually uh, do any of this cool stuff, we're actually going to go to the API uh, file. This is in our routes. So if you go to routes, you find API right here. And we're going to create one f just for um, so I'm just going to put a comment. So off. This is just for these are all the routes are off. And I'm going to copy and paste this. And we're going to name this sign up. Sweet. And I'm going to change this to post sign up. I'm going to copy the function name. Routes is all good to go now. Now we have one for sign up. Remember, this is a post. You can't do this on the uh, on the browser. Uh, the reason why this is a post is again, you know, we're saving, we're updating data, stuff like that. We're inserting this thing. We're in this function. We're actually going to be inserting. You're going to see us using get most likely when we get the post and stuff like that. But for now, uh, you know, we're going to be using post. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Anyways, let's go to the login API controller. If you don't know what that is, that's HTTP controllers login API controller. You should already have these two functions in here. And we're actually going to copy and paste the post login. I'm going to put that right there. Sweet. And we're going to change the name to post sign up. Okay. So what kind of fields do we need when we sign up? Um, we're going to keep it to the basics. Actually look at our database real quick. So if we look at our database and we go to Instagram, that's where we named our database. If we go to users table. We got a couple of fields that we got to fill in. We got name, username, email, password. Okay. So we got these four fields. It's as simple as let's just copy and paste this and do it and just add those fields. So we got name, email, we got our four fields. So name, email, username, password, name, username, email, password, same thing. Don't have to be a noter. Those are just variables. So let's just make sure that everything's right there. Okay, sweet. Uh, password, we are creating an account. So yes, we are going to have to MD five the password um, just when saving it. So and if you look at this part right here, what we're doing is actually um, confirming if there's a user, uh, we're not going to be doing any of that. So because you can't confirm a user if it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, but anyways, if we look at this function we made down here, we did uh, make a new user from the user model, which is right here. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, put this right here, and I'm going to add a little comment saying, make the user. So we're creating the user and his name will be whatever name we give it. So name, then it would be email. And you're, you're starting to get it. So it's just copy and pasting username and password is MD5 password. Sweet. So this should create our user. Now we do want to give a response back after we create the user, um, you know, just to have that. So let's actually go into here, copy that. And it's as simple as that. 
sweet. Now this would work, um, but just to keep things professional, we're actually going to add a validator. So a validator, what it does is just to make sure it, it, you basically set the rules and the only rules I'm going to be setting is make sure that uh, email and username is unique. Um, this is just going to make sure that, um, you know, that we're not going to run into any problems in the future. You know, if a username is the same and, you know, you try to do this if statement, you know, you are going to run into a problem. So just to do so, this actually would work but it's not secure and it's not professional. So, you know, I'm trying to give you guys best practice. So let's actually go into Laravel. Now I'm showing you guys exactly what I would do. You know, I don't remember the exact code for it. So we could just go to the Laravel uh, documentation and just look at it. So let's see how a validator works. So you do the request, uh, validate, okay and you give it its parameters and okay okay so validator make request all and if validator fails okay All right, so let's just let's just uh, let's just copy and paste this right here, and uh, let's just give it a try. So um, I'm gonna delete this right here, and we're gonna so we make all our variables. Okay, and our request is actually just gonna be request. You see us use this above here, so request all. And what are we going to validate for? So we're going to validate that we have all these fields first. So let's do name. Let's just copy and paste this. Name, email, username, and password. Now you may ask, why am I not putting uh, MD5 password? Now MD5 password is not something that we're getting from the user. As you can see, we're making MD5 password. So these will actually be what are the form what we're getting from the form that we've got to fill in in our app. So these are all required and we're going to delete this. And this is going to be a unique user. Unique users, uh, basically unique from the users table. So uh, name, uh, they can have the same name. So we're going to delete that, but they cannot have the same email address and the same username. Sweet. So if, if validator fails, um, what we're going to be doing is let's just copy this. Okay, let's clean it up. And if, if validator fails, let's just delete this right here. And we're going to display with errors. So validator and let's just see how do you display the errors um, <clears throat> so I believe it's validator validator errors first so it gives us a first problem that we're having and if this doesn't fail. So let's go to the else. If it doesn't fail, it was all good. Then actually is when we will create the variables. So validator first, then we can add that right there. And we can create our user. All right, so there we go, we got some security. Uh, we just have to test it. And let's add a message. So after we create the user, we want to do the same thing we do in the login system. So after we create the user, let's just get the ID and display it to the uh, to the app. This way we have something to work with. You'll see why we're returning the user in a second. Um, okay, this all looks good. Let's open Postman. 
<clears throat> and give this a try. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, a lot of copy and paste in there, but I'll explain it. Let's just uh, give this a try. All right, so let's go to sign up. So I'm gonna sign up. I'm gonna keep the same username. Uh, username, password, name, Mac one, and email will be gray at gmail.com. Click send. Okay, we're having an error in our code. Let's see what it is. Validator not found. All right, so let's just simply, uh, I think I have to import this, but let's just give this a try. If, um, just add that right there and click. Okay, now we have an error. Okay, so let's just see what the problem is with the uh, validator not found. So I'm gonna Google that first link. And do I have to import the validator? It's a good question. Um, All right, so let's just, give, let's just give this a try. Importing that. And we're still getting a, sorry, the page cannot be found. Okay, so that is an error. And so let's see what the problem is. So we got the post. Oh, <laughs> silly. So the reason is I forgot to delete this return right here. So it's trying to take us back. So let's go. Cool. Let's delete that. All right. So username is already taken. That should be right. Uh, if we look at, I'd never change the username. So that should be right. Now let me um, not change the, uh, let me change the username but have the same email as my first account. So my first account email was Mackenzie, which is my name. Copy and paste that. Put this right here, sweet. Now email is already taken. So it's gonna make sure that we never have the same, you, uh, basically it's not gonna, you're not gonna run into problems with people with the same email and the same username. Really professional, let's keep it that way. And let's say I put a one here, put a one here, different user, completely different person. Click that and we get status one, message three, which is the student ID or the, uh, basically the, the user ID, not the student ID. Uh, there you go. Sweet. Now we got the sign up API completely working with validation. And just to confirm that the validation is working, I'm not gonna change anything. You saw that it created the user. I'm gonna click send again and the email is already taken. That lets us know that a user cannot create an account twice. All right, guys, so that's, that is the sign up API. I'm actually gonna record the, uh, the sign up screen right now. I'm gonna do it all in one video just cause it's gonna be copy and pasting really from the login screen. Anyways, catch you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below telling me you're enjoying the series. I really appreciate those comments I'm getting. Fantastic series and you know, great job. You know, I really like, you know, um, motivating you guys to learn. And uh, I'll just catch you guys on the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, see ya.